What is going on everyone, Gareth the Master 974 back again today doing another Valve source code tutorial. This time around I'm doing a viewer requested tutorial about the black hole hop wire grenade. So thanks to Emulator for the suggestion. Although they wanted to know how this works in the multiplayer version of the source code and not the single player version. So as a little bonus to this video I'll outline issues and how to add this for the multiplayer as well as the single player. Now the steps are going to be pretty much the same, just that I'll outline the differences between single player and multiplayer as I get to them. So first off you want to navigate to your source code directory and open up the games solution as per usual. I'm using Visual Studio 2022 just because I can, but I do have Visual Studio 2013 installed on my system which is very very important. You can check out episode 0 for more information about that. And on your server project, if you're dealing with the HL2 code, then server HL2. If you're dealing with the episodic code, then server episodic. Somewhere in this uh, project, you want to right click and add existing item. And you want to go to SRC game server and then episodic. And then you want to add grenade hopwire.cpp, grenade hopwire.h, and weapon hopwire.cpp. And then you want to navigate to the client side version of the code. So if you did server HL2, then client HL2. And if you did server episodic, then go to client episodic. And again, somewhere on the client project, right click add existing item, go to SRC game clients episodic and add cweapon hotwire.cpp. So from what I can gather, you don't need to make any serious changes to the code. But one recommendation I would make in grenadehopwire.cpp is to change the hopwire vortex convar value to 1 because it's set to 0 by default but it never gets set to 1. So by changing it to 1 it makes it so the black hole grenade actually detonates and creates a black hole when you de you know choose to detonate it you know. There isn't actually a client class definition for the hopwire weapon only the grenade so the file's called C Weapon Hopwire, but you don't get a client class code for the weapon hopwire, only the grenade hopwire. So for this reason we have to go to C Weapon Stubs HL2 and inside of the hashtag ifdef hl2 episodic section near the bottom of the file, you should see something that goes something like stub weapon class C weapon hopwire blah de blah blah. And in my case, because I did this for the HL2 code, I'm just gonna take all of this and copy and paste it outside of that hashtag if def section. So if stub weapon class hopwire is not grayed out, then you're fine. But just in case you're dealing with the HL2 code like I am, then you have to make sure that it is valid. So taking it out of this hashtag if def HL2 episodic section is good. And we're also going to need to define the hopwire ammo. So for this we're going to go to hl 2 gamewallscpp and right at the very bottom of the file You'll see a whole load of def.add ammo type stuff and inside of another hashtag if def hl2 episodic section you'll see def.add ammo type of hot prior and a load of other stuff. So again if it's greyed out then make it not greyed out by cutting and pasting that section, that definition out of the hashtag if def section. If it's showing up perfectly fine then you don't really have to do anything. And near the top of this file, there should be another hashtag if def hl2 episodic section with a convar called skmaxhopwire, and you want that to be valid as well. Now, seeing as we have skmaxhopwire, this means we need to go to our skill.cfg file, so that would be in your mod cfg, and then skill cfg, and you'd have to define skmaxhopwire. And in speech marks, you can input any amount you want. I use five in this case. Uh, though you could use three or something like that. And the last thing we need is a weapon script. Now, I know I usually gloss over this. Maybe one day I'll do a video where I'll go into this in more detail. Though I think what I can say about the hopwire is it's pretty much exactly the same as the weapon frag script file. So you can just use weapon frag but replace everything frag related with hopwire so for example print name probably change the bucket in the bucket position as well so you don't get any overwriting issues primary ammo type as well but i think every other parameter such as anim prefix and view model default clip 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 two item flags rate sound data and texture data don't need to be modified at least if you're using weapon frag as a basis which i didn't 
So with all that being said and done, you should be able to compile the solution without any issues. And there you go, you have the uh, hop wire working in Source 2013 single player, at least the black hole grenade version of the hop wire. And I did experience only one crash, which was due to citizen code trying to find the player. And I guess there's a possibility that the player is set to null and that can lead to issues. So instead of being killed, the player is just removed out of the game, which is really, really bad. So there might need to be some changes to the way that the hop wire code is. But, you know, I don't really know what those changes would have to be. So very quickly now I'm going to move on to the multiplayer version of the code. It's pretty much exactly the same as I've outlined here. Uh, with the main difference being that you don't need to worry about the SK Max Hop Warrior Convar. And instead of HL2 game rules, we're actually going to go to HL2 MP game rules. And around line 938, which is somewhere in the middle of the file, this is where the def.add ammo type stuff is defined. So you want to define the hop wire ammo type. So it will do something like def dot add ammo type of hop wire in speech marks, then damage blast tracer non zero zero five zero zero and five in this case is the max ammo. You can change it to three. You can change it to whatever number you want, but this is a hard coded maximum amount of ammo that the hop wire can have. And there's actually a couple fundamental changes that we're going to need to make in grenade hop .cpp. So first you want to navigate to a function called combat think and there's a section with a util screen fade that I'm going to change around a little bit. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take the color 32 defined as white which is just 255 four times and I'm going to move that underneath the line that goes forward slash forward slash quick screen flash and then because we can't use stuff like util get local player in multiplayer because it would just return null and that's really bad. Uh, I'm actually going to create a for loop. So for int i equals one, i less than and equal to gp global's arrow max clients and i plus plus. Then we're going to define a c base player called asterisk p player which equals util player by index of i. Then if exclamation mark p player then break. And then util screen fade of p player white 0.2f, 0.0f, and f fade in. So, what this is doing is it's going to create a screen flash for all players that exist in the multiplayer game. Now, there is a drawback to this, which is that obviously every single player is going to see it. So, a much better way would be to iterate over all players and see if players are in a line of sight or within a particular distance from the hop wire. So, only those players see the screen flash. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work, just reasons why it didn't want to work. So either you iterate over every single player and they get a screen flash, so it's a warning, or just no one gets it so you can just delete all this code. But there's a much more serious change that we need to make, which is in a function called pull players in range. And you'll see a pesky C base player asterisk P player equals util get local player. And as I just mentioned, it only works in single player if I was actually to look up the function right now you can see it fails in multiplayer completely. So this is not what you want to have happen. This is a line you have to change. So what I decided to do was, as I just outlined with the screen flash, is I encapsulated the entire function inside of a for loop. So again, for int i equals one, i less than or equal to GP global's arrow max clients, and then i plus plus. Then if you go enter and do a left curly bracket, then at the very end of this pull players in range function, you can do a right curly bracket. And what you should see is all the code kind of out dense. And if that happens, then you've done it correctly. It iterates the code over all players in the game. And it should, in theory, pull individual players if they are close to the grenade hop wire so they can get killed. Now there's a couple issues with this that unfortunately I really don't know how to resolve. Uh, one is that the hop wire killing the player causes the game to think that the player with index 0 killed the player, which is bad, but that causes an assertion error inside of a file called C player resource, and it's called from hood def notice, and you can verify that by looking at the call stack. And so I think the only way to fix that is to stop the game from thinking that the player was killed by another player, but maybe they suicided instead. And so that's something I didn't really look into. That's something that will happen. You'll get an assertion error 
that player zero killed player one and that's bad. But another more game breaking serious issue is with a file called gameinterface.cpp. I don't know which function is calling this because it comes from external code that we don't have access to. And essentially a variable called recipient entity equals null and this causes a game breaking assertion error. If you try to continue, the screen will just go black and you can't kill, you can't do anything. It just stays on a black screen. So the server kind of dies. And I think it's got something to do with trying to get skybox data for the player. But as I said, this recipient entity equals null and I have no idea why it happens, how to fix it. It's probably the case that the player is getting removed and not killed. So again, there's probably going to need to be some sort of fundamental changes to the grenade hopwire codes that I just don't know what to do. But yeah, everyone, that has been how to add the black hole grenade into Source 2013. I hope you found the tutorial helpful. Please let me know what you think. Sorry that this comes across as a little rushed and I am experimenting with my new audio setup. So hopefully everything sounds A-OK. -okay. Take care out there. Let me know what you think. And hopefully the hop wire works for you. Take care out there, everyone.